welcome. Lovely to have you here for this, another edition of the Coaching Hour podcast. I'm Paul Rotherham. Welcome to it. Ladies, hello, Mary and Mareka. How are you both today? Great. 100%. Thank you. Lovely. Good to hear. Everyone looks happy and smiley and chipper, as does our guest for today. Uh, we are talking about, well, Mareka, I'll let you do the introductions because I don't want to steal your thunder. Good. Thank you so much, Paul. Yes, today we have a special speaker. It's Delicia Kulain, and she's a holistic lifestyle coach. She actually was an, an advocate, but then went into the sphere of human behavior, and she did her studies in psychology, Imago relationship therapy, as well as neuroscience coaching. And today we have Talisa to speak about burnout. And um, I myself is very interested in this topic because it's something that I feel many people struggle with at you know the current stage. But before we get into that, Talisa, please tell us a bit about yourself. Who is Talisa and why are you passionate about what you do? Thank you, Mareika, and thank you for having me. Yo, I'm passionate about what I do because I'm passionate about people and I like to see people live in their essence and live in their best self. You know, it's something that I've um, I've ventured into almost in search of who am I? You know, I think we all get to a point where we ask that crucial question in life, like, who am I? Who am I really? Um, why am I here? What am I doing here? You know, we are meaning making creatures in life. And uh, I think that question kind of got me into this. There were many other things, obviously, that got me into this. You can imagine from being a lawyer to to venturing into psychology. And um, yeah, I just love what I do. I, there's nothing, nothing more fulfilling for me um, than to sit with the clients. And then you see that change. You see their souls. You see them in their essence and they walk out of there and their word is thank you amazing wow you know taken from that session so that's like the ultimate to me and um yeah so I never work a day in my life I just yo know, hope to create change good thank you Delicia and let's get into burnout I'm sure this has become a buzzword in the last year or two before we get into the nitty-gritties of burnout Please explain to the listeners and whoever's watching, what is burnout? Because they, we use the word loosely, but what is burnout? Yeah, burnout. I mean, if we look at the symptoms where you have a decrease in your, your motivation, you start feeling depressed, you start feeling more anxious over little things, you're more irritable. You can't really get yourself to wake up in the morning without feeling really, really tired. And it is almost continuous uh, in a sense. It's not just two times a month, for example, or once in a blue moon. It's it's a continuous thing. Um, then you have to ask yourself the question, what's going on here? Because I'm not feeling myself. I often say, know thyself, you know, know your temperament, know who you are, know how you deal with things. If you snap more easily, if you become this grumpy employee, for example, or co-worker, if you, you don't have the tolerance that you used to have with your children, for example, your productivity isn't what it used to be. Um, then you have to start asking yourself the question, am I not suffering from burnout? And then you have to figure out where it started, I believe. You know, I have a client in Ireland. She's currently um, booked off completely. She can't go back to work for a period of time because of burnout. And it actually started way back. In, in, and the reason for it was in her work, she has this value system that, and it's a belief that formed from childhood, that the more I work, the better I am. If I work a lot, then I'm loved. It's, it's, a, it's a childhood thing. Her little girl was exposed to trauma, divorced parents, and in her mind, she formed the belief that the more I work, the harder I perform, the better I do, I'm loved. And she continued with this behavior up until her adulthood and it led to burnout you know and that's why we say prevention is really better than cure it really is better than cure and you you have to become mindful like you say it's a buzzword right so now that we have the buzzword let's do something about it you know and prevent it rather than 
sitting with a, a situation where you can't, for example, work for an extended period of time and you have to reset your system, your whole nervous system. It's almost like when you have um, your phone and your phone's battery is 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 going to, to go completely flat. We put it on charger, right? Why don't we do it with ourselves? Why don't we take the time off and um, we take leave, for example, at work? But do we leave? Do we really leave? Do we leave the work and park it there? Or do we just take it with us because it's our story, it's our role, it's what uh, what identifies us. You know, as advocate, I was identified um, by working hard. Three o'clock in the mornings, I was at Chambers. I used to remember making my bed in the mornings and I'd be like tears running down my down my cheeks because I'm so tired. However, I knew when I'm there at Chambers, four o'clock, my attorneys will start briefing me and we'd start talking and I thought, that's my identity. That's what I have to do to be good, to be acceptable, whatever the, the limiting belief can be, you know, like my client, for example. Hmm. It sounds to me, I must say, it sounds to me as if you're describing pretty much everyone I know, including myself. This is clearly something that is rampant. Yep. Yep. And we have to, you know, get to a point where we start asking ourselves, why am I doing this? You know? Why am I doing this to the detriment of myself? Look, I know we all need finances. Uh, we we need to, to have money in order to have the life we want to create for ourselves. However, when it comes to such a point where that leads to the deterioration of your soul and the deterioration of your relationships, then we have to start asking ourselves another question like, uh, is is financial affluence is that enough is that all is that worth it you know is it worth it um because this doesn't come without a price you know being so productive being so on top of everything being a go-getter being this like you said so many of the people you know are stuck in this and uh, we don't go back to the drawing board of what it is that we really want from our lives you touched on it very briefly what are some of the telltale signs, Talicia, that we can identify in ourselves when we look in the mirror and put our makeup on in the morning? Well, I didn't do mine today, as you can tell, but the average person, what are some of these indicators that we are fast approaching the place that I guess ultimately in your life maybe led you to change your career? I'm guessing that's what happened. I just want to hear if I'm hearing you correctly. you asking me um, what are the signs of a person wanting to steer their life in a different direction. Am I with you? Well, the, the signs that you're getting to the point where you're burning out, because you mentioned a few minutes ago, you said that one of the um, the people you coach, for instance, in Ireland, yeah. she has been at a point of burnout for many yeah. years or for a long time, and now it's reached ahead. So when so, I look in the mirror in the morning and I feel a certain way, what are some of those signs that I'm getting to that place? Well, there's a short answer. Like I said, when you wake up in the morning and you feel that you're still tired, there's an increase and a constant tiredness. There's a lack of motivation. You just don't feel yourself like something's off, but you don't know what it is. You are irritable. I mean, we all, I think, I can't speak on behalf of everybody in South Africa, but I think we all kind of get a bit frustrated when we go through a pothole or there's load shedding again and it has these adverse effects maybe on our business or on our household. And if we have small children and all of that, the repercussions that may be. However, that's momentarily, you know, you can drive through a pothole and you can snap and you can like maybe throw a word or, or whatever you want to do in that moment just to really feel what you're feeling and then you can get out of it you know it's not like it goes into your household and you're irritated with your your friends and your family and everything in life just too much and the smallest thing uh, becomes this dramatic event and this chaos in your life you know it's almost like almost like this toxic spiral so that's the short answer in terms of the symptoms if you have to put on your makeup and you feel like oh just can't anymore and the the things that brought you joy in life in the past it doesn't bring you joy anymore and um all over you just kind of feel like you have this low energy vibration where you just low any energy vibration emotions are sad unhappy uh unproductive 
uh, restless, depressed, all of those. However, when you, you when you can in the morning wake up and you maybe feel tired and you put on your first meditation or you put on a, maybe a song and you start doing your makeup and you can snap out of it easily and get to a high energy emotion, high energy frequency emotion, which is love, joy, peace, gratitude, um, longevity, all of those, and you can get there easily, then you don't have to be that worried because you can get yourself there. However, if you can't get yourself there, then you have to start asking yourself the question, what's going on? I often mm -hmm. say, and this is really the work of Dr. Joe Dispenza, where he says, don't get out of bed. Don't take a step out of bed when you don't feel that high frequency energy emotion. And one of the things that really gets you there is gratitude. I mean, we hear this so many times. If you lie in bed and you don't feel yourself or you don't have that oomph to get out of bed and you can name five things for which you are so grateful for and if that doesn't get you inspired then you have to start asking yourself the question what's going on you know and check your emotions as well if you are more emotional than you used to be then you'll have to start asking questions that's the short answer the long answer <laughs> which I'm not going to go into. I'm going to explain it very shortly because this is important. In life, we grow up and uh, things happen to us. There's trauma, uh, there's broken relationships, there's addictions, there's uh, uh, maybe bullying at school, something. And and we, we grow up and there's all these, I like to call it emotional markers. There's all these markers, things that we haven't dealt with in life. And we go into maybe toxic relationships or we go, like I said, and we find ourselves in our identity and our work and we just overwork ourselves and we just don't deal with these things from the past. I'm not saying we have to go and sit on a therapist couch for years in and years out and Freud ourselves um, you know, I'm saying there's certain techniques where we can reset the nervous system so that we can deal a bit with these markers, because if we don't, then there can be a very big explosion. And that explosion is often found in a, in, in, in a burnout. Um, and unfortunately, it's too late because that explosion has four characteristics or it, it presents itself in four ways. It's either something like a relationship that's gone uh, well, wrong, often a divorce, um, or it is our health. We we develop gout or we develop a certain pain somewhere or arthritis or whatever the case may be, cancer. Or it is uh, unfortunately something psychological as well, like an uh, anxiety, a depression. It can even go into maybe a bipolar. I don't want to venture into that too much, but I mean, there's enough reach, research for that. And then also death. It's either a suicide or it's maybe causing a death. So many people, when they have um, these motor vehicle accidents and the forms are filled out for the RAF claims, the question is asked, how did you feel the morning when you made the accident or when you got into the accident? You can almost be guaranteed that I had a fight with my mom or I had a fight with my husband or I didn't feel well because we take it into our daily lives. So those four things are very important. And then we say burnout. It's in a sense because we didn't take care of the things that had happened in the past and we didn't get to know ourselves and just deal a bit with this and reset our nervous system. Celicia, you mentioned an important point, resetting the nervous system. So like Paul mentioned, most people I know as well is already at that point where they have those symptoms that you mentioned. So what can we do now, either to prevent this from getting worse or to start resetting the nervous system? Well, we need to take care of ourselves. This is also a concept that we hear a lot about, you know, the concept of self-care and self-love. Often say that therapy isn't con concluded, you know, until self-love is evident. And it sounds weird, you know, how is self-love going to help you from burning out? Obviously it is, because when you love yourself, when you love your life, then you will make sure that there are certain boundaries in place. So the first thing we need to look at is to set boundaries for yourself and for others. I never used to know that I can set boundaries for myself. I'm still struggling struggling with that a bit, you know. So I'm, I'm, I'm going through this, and I know it's for a good reason, because I can then help people uh, conquer that as well, because we often... Don't tell ourselves, listen, just, whoa, breathe. Uh, don't put in this extra work hour or take time off or don't eat that. Don't drink that. Don't do, you know, like putting boundaries in place for yourself. 
And how you can do that is to, to take an observer effect of your life, to observe where you are now at the moment, you know, your current self, and then ask yourself a very crucial question. Where do you want to be? Like, what does your preferred self look like? What does your future self look like? And um, I know I have a very clear vision of my future self. And in the meditations I do, when I do future self meditations with my clients, when I did it with myself, I know how she looks, right? And uh, for me now to get there, I can't just whoop, go there, you know, I need to put certain things in place. Like, let's say PMS, <laughs> you know, where you can kind of have practical tasks, practical tasks, P, practical tasks every day, M, in measurable chunks, you know, where you kind of, you can measure it, you can, you can keep yourself accountable. I've done this, I've done this, I've done that. And then the S would be to you SOS, take care of yourself, you know, take care of yourself first. And that entails breathing, meditation. And it sounds so simple, but you guys, I, I'm I'm a meditation coach and I use a lot of meditation in my practice. And I have to be honest, even I find it sometimes uh, challenging to, to go into meditation every day because there's just no time. And the moment my life feels like the wheels are falling off, then I just ask myself a simple question. It's like, Talise, when last did you meditate? And almost every time the, the answer will be four days ago, three days ago, because it is such an important thing to reset your nervous system, breathing, meditation. And then there's, there's other um, techniques as well. The most important thing I think we lose out of sight is how small things can accumulate into big results. We often feel that we need to move to Timbuktu, you know, to change our lives. The thing is, we take ourselves with to Timbuktu <laughs> and then nothing really changes because that is an external change. Real change happens from the inside out. And it's something as simple as sleep. Jennifer Lopez, I watched a thing where she said um, one of her biggest health and um, beauty secrets is sleep. It's something so crucial. It's so small, but it isn't. It's crucial, you know, sleep, water, hydration, being intentional when we do take a break. I work with, with teachers who can't even take a break long enough to have a whole sandwich. So for them, they need to actually cultivate the practice of when they sit with their sandwich, not to necessarily think of other things, but to take a deep breath in reorientate themselves and 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 just focus on this moment using their senses smelling their their lunch tasting every bite looking at it savoring the moment being intentional and mindful in the moment that's something so small however the fruit you will reap is huge because you will learn how to become mindful and intentional in other areas in your life like for example when you're standing in a queue and it's a long queue and they take so long and it's slow just to know that you don't need to now react. You can just stay in the moment and be in that moment because there's really no other place where you can be. And that's becoming mindful and cultivating mindfulness. I just touched on boundaries. I think that's one of the most important things to set for yourself and for others in preventing burnout. Hmm. So sure, that is very insightful, Delisa. Thank you so much. I really enjoy this discussion and these bits and pieces of this discussion that I think we can even take further and more in detail. Um, but one of the things that stands out for me is it's something that you have to practically put in place. Yep. It's not going to happen by itself. You know, you have to be so conscious, mindful, intentional, um, and you have to think, you know, what, how can I live my life different, you know, day on a daily basis so that I can get back to resetting, like you said, that nervous system of ours. Okay, yes. It's absolutely... I... Sorry. So, can I also um, mention, <clears throat> when you work with your clients, um, do you find that they have um, a build-up of resentment towards someone or, um, you know, that blocks the flow of going forward? Absolutely, absolutely. That can definitely be one of the reasons. And often it's rooted in a victim triangle, you know, where, where 
where you feel you then become the persecutor of this person who you once saw as a victim and you try to rescue. There's, there's a lot of resentment in a victim triangle. That's a topic that we can venture into at another stage. However, the resentment, I, I once heard this saying, where resentment docks happiness, where resentment hovers, happiness docks elsewhere, you know? So definitely, uh, resentment is one of the biggest thieves there could be. And often in a, in a work environment where you have colleagues that take advantage or colleagues that get preferential um, attention or benefits, perks, then that resentment um, can start to, to grow. And that that's, again, where you need to get back to yourself, because when you Cultivate a practice of mindfulness, especially when you do mindfulness exercises like John Kabat-Zinn's loving kindness, mindfulness exercises, then something in you changes. You know, you can't change other people. You can change yourself and you can change how you look at things. Like Wayne Dreyer said, change the way you look at things and what you look at will change, you know. So even resentment can, if it's undealt with, lead to a lot of health concerns, especially burnout. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Delisa. This was really an insightful discussion. And, and um, I think we would love to have you again, maybe talking about that victim triangle. I think this is quite also an important topic. But thank you so much. Is there any final thought that you can leave with our listeners before we wrap up our session? Yes, I think the final thought would be the word I'm checking out with then would be SOS. Like immediately, when you start to notice you're not feeling well, take that to someone, even if it is a colleague that you trust, um, even if it's your spouse, be brave enough. Like Brene Brown says, it's brave to be vulnerable. Like be brave enough to say, listen, you guys, I'm not feeling well. Something's off. And then from there, get someone to help you through it. You don't have to sit in therapy or coaching for years just get some new tools because we change with new information. And that's all you need is a bit of a mind shift and some self-care and love. It's brilliant. Love that. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Delicia. I uh, understand we'll be chatting with you again in an upcoming episode. So that'll be wonderful. Thank you for your time. Enjoy Malk, boss. I'm going to continue Thank to enjoy Benoni. No laughing. Uh, just like Mary, who's also in Benoni. Mareka, where are you? Pretoria. Okay, Pretoria. Laka, laka. Team, thank you very, very much for contributing to this, another episode episode of the Coaching Hour podcast. And Talisa, I hope that we can chat with you again soon. Thank you. <laughs>